back there. God bless you. Yeah, good to have the choir back. Good to have you walk me just by, uh, by internet as well as in person. Look at all these masked people here that are being careful. That's great. That is great. We can, uh, we can hear your voices. Some of you actually sound better through the mask. <laughs> no, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Okay, we're, we're moving along. Lots of things going on this week. We want you to look at your, your uh bulletin and please take it with you we found about a dozen of these in the pews after last sunday so take it with you as well as your communion cup don't leave anything in the pews like they say you know take only memories you know leave only footprints and all that when you go in the forest um there was a couple back in the 70s some of you may remember the disco days and a couple was walking into a discotheque and this guy out in the middle of the floor and he was break dancing and moonwalking and flipping backwards and doing all kinds of things. And the woman said, I recognize that man. I could have married him 25 years ago. And her husband said, well, it looks like he's still celebrating. <laughs> well, we're going to celebrate, okay? We're going to celebrate the presence of God among us. Yes, we know that God is with us. He loves us. He brings us together. If you're online, please give us a thumbs up and a subscribe and share and be aware of all the activities there are. I hope all of you are looking at the, uh, the uh, online uh, newsletter that comes out every Saturday morning. If you haven't subscribed to it already, go on the, the web page for the church and subscribe to the newsletter. Hit that button and click on it. There's a new member orientation. If you're interested both in-house as well as online to becoming a member at the uh, 10.30 tomorrow morning in the conference room. Anybody that's interested, has questions about the church, has, uh, I mean, I know some of you members have questions about the church, <laughs> but we want you to be aware of, of what's going on and what Methodists believe and something about the history of this congregation as well as the kind of opportunities there are for different types of service and involvement. So we hope that if you're at all interested, you're not... Uh, uh, an official member yet, but you've been attending maybe for a while, or you're a new visitor. Do we have any first-time visitors here this morning? Anybody that's never been here before? All right. Good to have all of you home, folks. Remember, don't forget to invite your friends and neighbors. Uh, we have had a lot of new people come through our Thursday night meal or our Wednesday noon meal. So if you can invite someone to uh, the Wednesday Amazing Grace or the Thursday night tea and tea, offer to... Uh, pay for their meal the first time, and get them in, and get them acquainted with our fellowship, and a lot of people out there are looking for new friends and not really sure how to make them, so invite them to come to one of our meals or one of our other activities. Also, uh, there will be a memorial service tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock for Dick and Marilyn Brown. Many of you that have been here for a number of years remember Dick and Marilyn, very faithful members for about 25 years here in this church, and... Uh, uh, Dick passed away last spring, and Marilyn several years ago, that we're going to be celebrating their life at 10 o'clock in the chapel tomorrow morning. So come and be a part of that if you possibly can. And uh, just encourage you to welcome people into our congregation. If you see someone that you don't recognize, uh, feel free to go over and introduce yourself. If you're not into shaking hands and you don't want to do that part, just keep your hands at your side and... Uh, Watch out for Maxine, she'll hug you anyway. But <laughs> anyway, uh, just keep on uh, introducing yourselves. Glad to see some of you back from surgeries and, and wellness. Hope that you'll pray for those that are continuing to have our needs as we begin our worship time right now.
it just gets better and better. Thank you, Pat. As we come together today, let's give thanks and call each other to worship. We come to you, O oh God, to thank you for what is good. We come to you, O oh God, crying out for what is wrong in our world. We come to you, O oh God, seeking your help and your renewal. We come to you, O oh God, for strength to do all that you ask of us. Let us worship God. Our hymn, our hymn is uh, number 150, stanzas one, two, and four. Let us stand. As we prepare our hearts and minds and spirits for a time of prayer and meditation, I would like to report to you that in the material in the handout today that you have, Carol Hill was is a frequent attender here, uh, and she has been in Boswell, but she is now in the rehab center. So continue to pray for her and for her recovery, and as we pray for Jackie McCubbin and Barbara Bailey. Sharon uh, Grun Hicks has been released from uh, rehab and the hospital, but she has a really a difficult sore on her leg that will take quite a bit of healing and needs special treatment. Please continue to be in prayer for Sharon and for her husband, Jerry, and pray for Sharon Myers and her recovery as well. We think of Brian Baker. Brian will be having surgery tomorrow a hip replacement, so let's be in prayer for him. And let's be in prayer for the, the Brown family and friends who will be attending the service tomorrow. We think also of one woman in our church who is going to celebrate a 100th birthday on Tuesday. Kind of amazing. That's Bluett Henriksen's mom, Vivian Marks, who hasn't been able to attend for a while. But we will be celebrating her birthday at Amazing Grace on Wednesday after she has the birthday on Tuesday. Marianne Lemley has asked us to pray for her son Bryce, who is once again in the hospital. 
let us sing our prayer song or let us listen to the choir leading us with our prayer song before we move into silent prayer. God of all wisdom, you who put the stars in the heavens and assign the planets their orbits. As the rains fall, the soil is nurtured. As the sun shines, the plants reach upward. You set the seasons of life to fit your purposes. You grant years of productivity because of your grace for us all. We give you thanks for the care you bestow on the earth. We gather today remembering that our ultimate goal is to glorify you. Our richest gain is to enjoy you forever. We're thankful, loving God, for Jesus, who made known your wisdom once and for all. By his healing touch, he overcame the power of disease and injury. We give you thanks that disabilities and illness can never render us incapable of knowing your love. We can face unafraid whatever befalls us and rejoice with assurance that we shall dwell forever with you, made whole by your touch. We are thankful that through Jesus' sacrifice, he challenged the finality of death. We can trust with gratitude in your eternal care of those closest to us and look for the day when we too shall be reunited with those departed gathering around the table of Christ's heavenly banquet. We are thankful indeed for your Holy Spirit who guides us through the valleys of the shadow of doubt. When we question your judgment, it is your spirit revealing your will to us. When we seek wisdom and understanding, it is your spirit sustaining and nurturing us. Gently you care for us, and with peace you comfort us. For all your tender mercies would give you glory and thanks, O God Almighty. Hear now the prayer Jesus taught his first disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, good morning. So good to be here and worship with all of you today. And for those who are watching online, we're grateful to have you be a part of our online congregation today and sharing in our worship. I'm Dave Summers. I'm one of the pastors here at Lakeview United Methodist Church. And just a moment, our choir is going to be sharing their gift of music with us. We want to share a reminder to ask you to be sure and fill out the attendance slip that you were given when you came into the worship center this morning. And you can place that into the offering plate. If you're watching online, um, particularly through our website, there's a place you can click on, a button to click on to fill out what we call a connection card. We'd love to know who you are and that you're watching us also. And uh, on that connection card and that attendance slip, if there's a, there's a place if you need a request for prayer or would like to meet with a pastor, you can let us know that. We would look forward to hearing from you. If you're new here or if you feel new, both here in the worship center or watching us online, um, we do look forward to being in touch with you and Pastor Ross and Linda and myself would look forward to visiting after the service or we invite you to stop by our welcome wagon out in the, the lobby where you came in and uh, we've got a free gift for you. If you're new online, we look forward to hearing from you too and invite you to email us or be in touch with us. Let's continue our worship of God and know that God's presence and grace continues to fill us and give us strength on this day especially. Thank you. 
Good morning. Our scripture today is from Mark chapter 9, verses 30 to 37 of the New Revised Standard Version. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. They sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The word of God for the people of God. Our hymn is from our small black hymnal, 2172. Make me a channel of your peace. Let's stand. In our gospel lesson today, we hear an episode in which Jesus is traveling with his disciples, and of course, they only got from one place to another by walking in those days. And on the way, Jesus overhears the disciples arguing amongst themselves about who is the greatest. I don't think it was a proud moment for Jesus to hear them arguing about who they thought was the best among themselves. And so it sounds a little bit to me like Ted Turner's comment. You may remember when he once said, if I only had a little humility, I'd be perfect. We, we all know people like that, and we probably felt that way ourselves at one time or another. Jesus reminds us here what true greatness is. He said, those who want to be the best, the first, the greatest, must be the ones who place themselves last of all. That's the way things will work in God's kingdom. The, the reality is we all know a little bit about being last or about being least. 
And we've had that experience, and the truth is it's usually not a pleasant experience when that can happen for us. Maybe it happens early on in life, and we learn those lessons. When we were the last one to be picked for a team, or the last one to be asked out on a date, or the last one to be offered a job, the last one to be offered a promotion. When I was in high school, I played in the high school band and, and enjoyed that experience quite a bit. I played the trombone. Are there any trombone players out here in the congregation? Oh, I see, I see a couple. We're very special people as trombone players. Even a woman trombone player, that's awesome. That's a little unusual as well. Well, I, I'm going to brag for a minute. Not quite in the spirit of Jesus here, I'm afraid, but I'm going to do it anyway. I, by the time I got towards the end of high school, I was the first trombone. I was the first chair, first trombone. Now, there were only three trombones in the band, so it's not that there were hordes of people trying to get to the top of the heap in the trombone line there, but, but, but I was excited to be the first one. And I think by my senior year, the band director had leaned on me or encouraged me to audition for the Northern California Honor Band. You had to make a tape and send it in. So I did that, and I was delighted when I got a letter back saying I'd been accepted into the Honor Band until I read the fine print. And it said I would now be placed in the Honor Band in the third trombone section. And I thought, well, it's been a long time since I've been in the third trombone, but I'll do that. When I showed up for the rehearsal for the Honor Band, it was even worse. Not only was I in the third trombone section, I was the third chair in the third trombone. That means I'd gone from first to last. So fast I had whiplash, actually. And, and when they took the picture that night at the concert of the honor band, I was so far in the back of the band, you couldn't even see me. I was behind the tubas. That's where they placed me. So it, it was a lesson of humility. Not, we never asked for those lessons, but life sends to give them to us anyway. But, but Jesus reminds us in God's kingdom that, that things are upside down. That God often works things in ways that are counter to the rest of the world. So Jesus says, in God's kingdom, the greatest will be those who are often the least in this world. So there's a lesson for us to understand there. We, we run into this, we know it. We run into it all the time in a culture in which we live, in which we're pushed always or encouraged to find more credit for ourselves, to raise our status, to make ourselves look better, to look the best, to get ahead in every way possible. And, and, and if you're not feeling those pressures so much in your life right now, that, that's wonderful. But I can guarantee you that your children or your grandchildren or great-grandchildren are living in a world in which those pressures are working on them constantly and never letting up for them. Uh, Napoleon once said, the greatest discovery he ever made was that men would be willing to risk their lives all for the privilege of wearing small medals on their chests. We like things that distinguish ourselves, distinguish us and make us look better. And, and that's the competitive nature of the world in which we live. Martha Friesk, who is a New Testament scholar, said this about Jesus' teachings. He said, Jesus' teaching on being last is actually a liberating word for us. It is not an onerous burden. Who of us, she said, wants to spend our lives being consumed by always having to find and get more attention and more visibility for ourselves? An upside-down kingdom of God is freeing for us. It is a better place to live. It is a better place to for a spiritual life to grow. So here's where Jesus reorients our goals, and redefines what is important for us. We want to be able to serve Christ in the ways that He desires, not in what others expect of us. And the ways in which we might serve Jesus will open our eyes, and they will reorient us to the ways that we see ourselves and the world. Roberta Bondi, who has written so eloquently about the spiritual life for us, made this observation. She had a definition of humility I like. She said, humility is a way of seeing other people as being as valuable in God's eyes as ourselves. Humility is a way of seeing other people 
as being as valuable in God's eyes as ourselves. And I think that's what Jesus is getting at in this passage about those in the kingdom of God who want to be the greatest will often be those who have been the least in this world. This is an upside-down view of the way that God works. You know, in the culture in which we live, we're often told or we get messages that we'll see more if we rise from the top to the top. But Jesus says you'll really see more. You'll have greater understanding if you're at the bottom. We think at the top we'll be closer to success. Jesus says actually at the bottom when you're the least, you may find yourself closer to God, a much better place to be. Martin of Tours was the first military chaplain, we think. This was almost 2,000 years ago. And Martin followed the Roman army wherever it went to minister to the soldiers and to the people that they conquered. One cold winter day, he was following the army and they marched into a new city. And at the outskirts of the city, there was a beggar there asking for alms and for help. Most of the soldiers just ignored him and walked past. Martin stopped to talk with him. And Martin had been out in the field with the army for months. And at this point, he didn't have anything hardly on him. Didn't have a coin, didn't have a crust of bread. And this fellow needed much. The only thing Martin had to give him, he did. Martin took his Roman soldier's cloak, which was a well-made garment. And he took his sword and he cut the cloak in half. And he gave half of it to this man, this beggar, and the other half he kept for himself. Then Martin said that night he had a vivid dream. He dreamed that he was an observer up in heaven. And there he saw the Lord Jesus surrounded by a group of angels talking with him. And to his surprise, Martin could see that Jesus was wearing half of a Roman soldier's cloak. And one of the the angels said to Jesus, Master, why is it that you are wearing this old, torn, and dirty soldier's cloak? And softly in the silence in this dream, Martin heard Jesus say, My good servant Martin gave it to me today. That's living as God intends for us to live. Jesus says, let's be willing to move and to love in unexpected places, in unexpected direction, so we can serve where God calls us to serve. We remember that Jesus was always an unexpected kind of Messiah. He did not do things that people expected of the Messiah the Savior of the world. He did not talk or act in ways that people often expected. Jesus was a Messiah who welcomed and cared for children who in the first century were often thought of as just so unimportant. Jesus loved and valued the vulnerable, not just the powerful. And so when we think of the story where Jesus invited a young child to come and to sit on his lap as he talked with the disciples about who was the greatest in the kingdom of God, Jesus might have been saying, think about the qualities that children embody and how we need to emulate them ourselves. You think about those qualities in children. Often children are dependent on others or may have a certain helplessness. Children need a loving relationship with a parent. Children may have a more natural humility or innocence. They haven't become quite as jaundiced by the world as the rest of us may be. And you know, we don't tend to value those qualities in adults as much, do we? But the interesting thing is, as we age, sometimes those qualities become more prominent in our lives more a part of us again, our dependence on others or our need to be cared for or even a sense of helplessness sometimes. And we're left to grapple with those qualities 
and how we will live with them, but we would also remember those are often the qualities of a mature spiritual life where we learn again to depend more on God and less on ourselves. And when our hearts are open to the least, the people around us who are the least, we may be allowing more room for Christ to be present and to work in us. And that's a spiritual lesson we all can learn and live and grow by. Some of us may feel that we have been able to make significant contributions in our life, that we were able to do things, to do work, which received re we received recognition for ourselves. I don't think Jesus is downplaying that. But he's also saying, let's always make room for the ways God wants us to live and for what God values in others around us so that we live up to God's expectations, not just what the world lays upon us. If we live this teaching that Jesus is sharing today, we'll be more concerned with serving God than living a self-serving life. One of my favorite preachers over the years was a man named Fred Craddock. He was a seminary professor, a, a New Testament scholar, marvelous preacher. I heard him preach a number of times. And he told about a time he was preaching in a university church in Oklahoma, Norman, Oklahoma. And at the end of the worship service that Sunday, a young woman came up with a great sense of urgency to see him. Fred had been preaching that morning on the call of the disciples, about what it means to be a follower of Jesus. This young woman came up, introduced herself, and said she was a med student at the university there. And then she said, your sermon clinched something for me that I have been grappling with for some time. Fred said, oh, well, well what is that? And she said, I'm thinking seriously of dropping out of medical school. And Fred was dumbfounded. It was the last thing he expected to say. So he just kind of blurted out, why would you ever want to do that, he asked. And she told Fred how she was feeling this inner nudge to leave the area and go down to the Rio Grande Valley to work there with migrants, with children and adults. She felt that God was calling her to do that kind of work. And as it turned out, that's what she ended up doing. She left medical school, Fred found out later. She went down there and lived in the back of a pickup truck, sleeping under a piece of tin during the day, teaching migrant children while their parents were out working in the field. She left all that she had been preparing for in college, all that hard work in medical school, so that she could go down and serve where she felt God was calling her the most. And her poor parents back up in Montana were scratching their heads, wondering what on earth had happened to her. And so as they finished up the conversation, Fred said, found himself saying to her, he said, well, you know, I was just preaching this morning. I didn't mean for you to, you know, it shocked him. But there may be a time, there may be a time when God says to us, I need to disrupt your life. I, I need you to shift your plan. I need you to open your eyes. I need you to reach lower to do what I'm calling you to do. God may ask us to make a dramatic shift in our lives. Or it may be just a temporary move. It may be God calling you to serve in an unexpected place. Or it may be God calling you to give yourself to help the least likely person you ever wanted to be around, to help them to know and meet the love of Jesus Christ in a way they haven't known before. And when that happens, then it's not so hard to serve the least and the lost or the last. Maybe in those moments we can live up to our highest ideals and to do our best work, or as Jesus says, being the greatest in the kingdom of God. Let's pray for how we may answer that call when it comes to us 
in the moment we least expect it. Will you pray with me? Most loving God, you know our lives. You know us so well. What makes us work, what we have to offer, our greatest gifts, our weaknesses. And you know where you need us to serve. Help us to hear again your voice that calls us. And in, even in surprising moments, may we find the strength and courage to say yes to your gracious invitation and find the joy of doing what you have asked of us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, this is the time when we talk about giving. The most important thing you can give is to give your heart to Jesus Christ. And if you're here watching and, and are participating this morning and you never really invited Jesus to come in and take control of your life, you can do that easily by simply asking him to forgive you and to come into your heart. And he promised that he would and that he would never leave you. And that's the greatest gift you can ever have. However, during August and you know late summer, our uh, finances tend to take a dip and if we can come back with uh, uh, the giving financially, that is greatly beneficial. If you've been putting off your gift, this is a good time to give. Uh, you can give online, obviously, with a credit card or mail-in, uh, or even by text now with the directions that there are online. So let me encourage you to support the work that carries the message of Christ, not only into our community and our ministry, but around the world. As you give, may God bless you. Oh God, we pray that you would use these gifts in your life-giving ways. May the gifts we offer today be used to be able to bring healing to those who are broken. May these gifts bring hope and help to those who are grieving and suffering. May these gifts 
Bring your love to a world that is so much in need of you. We pray through Jesus Christ. Amen. We invite you to be seated. And for those at home, please be prepared to join us in communion by preparing some bread or some juice for yourselves. Is there a hymn? Him? Not her, but him. We come together as brothers and sisters in Christ. We live about in the same area, but we're not coming from exactly the same life. We are coming from the same creator. We are all one in spirit. We are all one as God's children. We're none of us really better or worse than the others. We're all human. We all make mistakes. We all make contributions. This is an opportunity to remember that Jesus loved us all equally and still does, and that we can come together in union to celebrate that and take the changes and the ups and downs of life to better someone else's around us. And so we remember that on the night that he was last with his disciples at a meal, he took the bread, broke the bread, and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. And then he took the cup, and as he had with the bread, he asked a blessing on it. He lifted it up and said, this is my blood of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for many. Do this as often as you can as an act of repentance and forgiveness, knowing that you and many are forgiven and you and many are loved. We think of that today as we bless these elements that we join together in partaking. A loving God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice from the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again in final victory and we feast with him at his heavenly banquet. With your Son, Jesus Christ, and your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Take the bread, if you will, and hold it and consider that, that this is the body of Christ for us, given that we might have eternal life. So when you eat, be thankful. As we consider the Jews, the blood of Christ redeeming us, we remember that we are being called to serve in his name, to be active ministers in word and deed, all of us, not just some. And that in so doing, in small acts, big acts, whatever we do, we're all equal, we're all brothers and sisters, children of God. And our focus needs to be upon God and upon God's will and direction for us through Jesus Christ. As we take the juice and drink it, let us remember that service, that call to ministry that we have received. Let us pray. 
all-powerful God, may the new life you give us increase our love and keep us always in the joy of your kingdom and reign. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our risen Lord. Amen. I hope you're ready to be daring and adventurous. You're going to need your hard cover hymnal, and we are going to be singing number 421. So I'll give you a minute to find that. I don't know if you all remember when we first started broadcasting the service a year and a half ago during COVID. We all came in and did our parts on Thursday afternoon, and then we left, and Glade kept all of the mistakes that we met. He called them bloopers. And he showed them to you at the end of each broadcast. So we've had another one of those this morning, and it's causing us to shift to the book and a hymn. So stand with me as we sing. we go out from our worship this morning, we share an invitation for all of you to join us over in Smoot Hall for our coffee hour time. And uh, while you're over there, we're going to put a little spotlight on her. You might want to wish Pastor Linda a happy birthday. She's got a birthday coming up. And so we're, she said there's a lot of September birthdays, but um, we're really glad you were born and that God called you to serve here. I'm not unhappy Linda. about it. Okay, I'm glad, to, I'm glad to hear that. Also, our Methyl, travel, Methyl Travelers let me know they have four additional spots for a trip to Bisbee. So they have a table over in Smoot Hall. You can check with them if you'd be interested in joining that trip also. Again, if you are new or feel new here, we invite you to stop by our welcome wagon out in the, the lobby here and to receive the gift that we have for you this morning. So as we go forth, let's hear this word of dismissal. This week, may the loving Christ go with you, walking beside you as your friend, above you to protect you, beneath you to hold you up on God's everlasting grace and strength. 
Go in God's peace. Amen.